And now I'm getting rich. I think we're on. Yep, we're on. Say hi, Ted. Hey, Ted. <laughs> oh, wait. It's all good. I was fucking No, wrong. I know, I know. All right, cool. What's up, everybody? Say hey, hey to hey. Ted. Ted, you guys have probably heard of Ted before. If you've been involved with the course, I know you have, um, because you guys have probably talked to Ted at some point. Uh, Ted is here today because over... Derek... What's going on, buddy? Um, so Derek is here today. <laughs> Ted said, hey. Um, Derek Derek is here today. Ted's here today because uh, he actually so started working with me when I first, well, almost when I first started the brand. I started doing it by myself, obviously, and then you know, several months after, I brought Ted into it um, just because he actually, Ted and I have been working together since college, a very, very long time. Um, yeah, this is going to be a TED Talk. Uh, just so you guys, just so you guys know, we're about to get real insightful. Um, but no, Ted's been working with me since college. We've done several projects together, several businesses together. Um, so he's kind of like my right hand man. I definitely rely on him for a lot. And so he wanted to get involved with this. Basically, I took him under my wing to try and coach him through email marketing, automations, campaigns, stuff like that. So Ted is here today to share his expertise because I got to say he's doing a great job with our email marketing. Um, he's learning very quickly and he's <laughs> able to take what he's learned and already start applying it to help my business. And, you know, once we start, you know, phasing him into the actual agency side of things, uh, you know, he'll be able to help out tremendously there. So we're going to talk to you guys about campaigns, uh, broadcasts. Basically, it's two types. It's two strategies to email marketing that you have to be implementing into your campaigns. And then we're going to talk about different actual types of campaigns that you can be running uh, that are super effective. They've been really effective with us. There are different types of automations that we run. Um, if you're in the course, you've definitely seen our breakdown on automations. We went through and did a whole thing. We're actually going to be updating those videos here shortly we, because we've even improved on our process working what? with Active Campaign. So, guys, Active Campaign in email marketing, anytime you switch to a new platform, you have to learn all of their features because I was used to working in MailChimp at first and then we switched to Active Campaign because we found the utility of that app to be even better. So, you know, there's a learning curve there that he and I both are still learning and figuring out because they're even cha they changed their platform today. They updated, I believe, their dashboard or their navigation on their site because they realized how complex their site was. But if you guys are looking for an email marketing platform, that is definitely the one to check out, Active Campaign. There's actually a link in the description below uh, if you've never seen Active Campaign before, but you can check that out there. Um, so we're going to give it two more seconds for people to join in, and then we're going to go ahead and talk about these email campaigns that are super effective for us. They've actually, for Serial Entrepreneur, they have increased our marketing and our sales anywhere from 20 to 30% on a monthly basis. We get that many more sales because of what happens with our email marketing campaigns. Um, it's funny, I actually get people who message me on a decently regular basis just to tell me that they appreciate the content they get in my email campaigns. You know, I get the YouTube stuff all the time, but occasionally I get people who message me and say, yeah, the email content's great. We love getting that stuff. And it's because we put a ton of value in there. All of the stuff that we put in, the you know, these videos we put into documentation, we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit um, and how that works into your process. Because if you guys didn't see last week, we uploaded repurposing content. This is like the best way to repurpose content. Email marketing, all you have to do is take all the work you're putting into video on YouTube, posts on social media, blog posts, website content, anything like that, and you can repurpose it in your email marketing campaigns. So that's what we're gonna talk about today. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. The first two types of, or the first, not first two, just the two types of email marketing campaigns you're gonna to wanna to run are obviously campaigns, just regular one-off campaigns, broadcasts, stuff like that. And then there's automations or drips. You guys have probably heard about that, right? So you know what an automation is. It's those you know drip campaigns when somebody subscribes to something, they get a bunch of different emails sent to them down the funnel. But what kinds of campaigns should you be running? That's the real question. You know to be sending campaigns, but what types of campaigns do you need to run? And how do you know what to run for different customers? Well, that's the thing I want you guys to understand first and foremost, every customer is different. So you really have to do an analysis and understand how their customer is going to react to your email campaign that you're sending. So once you have an understanding of that, the different types of campaigns to run. And again, let me go through a campaign. A campaign is a one-off email. That's it, it goes out one time and that's it. No automation involved with it, no triggers. 
Um, no blast. tags. Yeah, exactly. A blast or a broadcast, something like that. So what types of campaigns should you be running? Basically, we have two types. Okay, we have blog or video updates. You guys probably get those from me if you're subscribed to my email address or to my email list. And then industry updates, that's another big one. And then basically what you do is with those two, you have with blog and vlog, you're going to create content for your YouTube channel or for your website, whatever. And then you just take it and you put it into a small chunk and then you say, hey, go visit this on our website. Now, what? why is that good? Number one, you can retarget them with Facebook if they went to your website. Number two, you have sent them to your website and they've visited a specific page or taken a specific action. So you've tracked all of that via your email marketing if you're tagging things properly, which is something we've been working on all week this week oh, is yeah. cleaning up our tags. Um, so, you know, this is crucial to getting it done and then industry updates people like to stay up to date so for example with our real estate client we'll send email marketing content on uh, you know home values in the area people love that kind of stuff and if you can drive them to your site based on that you know that's data that you can use and say okay well if they're looking at home values they might be interested in selling their home so we can send this person through a sold home automation or selling your home automation something like that so let's go ahead and get into the next two parts which go ahead Ted so one of the most important ones is promotions and specials um, you basically have to have those obviously you know you're gonna have your followers who follow your Facebook Instagram YouTube channel but you know for those people who really rely on emails you know it's important to get them involved and you know know when you have promotions and specials they might have been following you for a while on your YouTube and you know they might have just been waiting for that perfect opportunity to get into your course or to right. purchase your product you know based on a special or a discount uh, I mean that's huge um, and contests contests are pretty important as well you know it helps really engage your users you know um, most of the contests we've done you know we have somebody like share and you know add people to you know a post in our Facebook and then you know based on that we send them an email and get them involved in the contest Right. And another thing about promotions and specials, guys, that you have to understand, when you send them that promotion or special, you have to, at some point you have to realize you're going to take, it's, I guess you, if you want to consider it, a hit on a sale, meaning you're not going to get 100% of the value of that sale. So the whole psychology, the whole psychology, sorry, behind it is if you're going to touch this person 20 times and they're going to, you know, they're going to come back and they keep reading your content, they keep downloading articles, but they haven't made a purchase yet. You know, it might just be out of their price range. And let me ask you something. Would you rather let that customer go completely or take, you know, a 15, 25% cut and still make, you know, at least 75% of the revenue that you could make off of that person? And not to mention, if you have other things that you can sell them later, you can use that, you know, to say, okay, well, we've sucked this person in here. Now we're going to send them all of our other stuff and try and see if we can buy them, get them to buy more stuff. Basically raising their average order value or their, their lifetime customer value. All right, so that's the whole point behind those promotions and you have to be running promotional emails occasionally. You don't wanna be run, you know, do yeah, not spam saying, promotional yeah. emails. People don't like that stuff. But, you, you know, on occasion, I'd say once, maybe twice a month, depending on the style of business, you know, if they're very, uh, engaging and people just like to look at their brand online then that type of stuff is okay but outside of that I mean you don't want to just you don't want to blast promotions out and make it seem like you're always giving stuff away okay so next type of thing we're gonna talk about those are a little bit about the campaigns some of the types of just one-off campaigns you can you know be running most of you guys knew the campaigns so let's talk about the important stuff which is the automations okay so your first automation is really your welcome series or your onboarding automation so when somebody you know purchases your course for instance you know one of the first things we want to do is give them all the information they're going to need to be really successful in the course as well as give them you know contact to you know the the team as well as get them engaged you know in your facebook and your youtube and your podcast and every aspect really so you're making sure that somebody that came in hey from youtube can have access to every platform you're promoting on and that way, you know, this is going to help do upsells and, you know, just keep them involved in your product. Right. And the key thing, again, it's it's building the relationship. It's it's building what you call brand loyalty or customer loyalty. Those types of things are super important. And when you take a customer and say, OK, you just bought her and it doesn't have to necessarily just apply to our course. Again, this is with any product. If someone purchases a you know burrito from a new burrito restaurant and you send them a 
hey, uh, we have this special that we run every Wednesday. Just wanted you to know, so that way in case we run it next week and you're feeling like another burrito, you can come by. Those types of things people appreciate, and it makes them want to come back because it's like, okay, cool. They're not just looking to take my money. They're offering me a deal, and they're making sure that I know about that deal and that it's coming on a regular basis, right? So, in Ooh, that was bad. <laughs> <laughs> it's like All right. no Informational campaigns are what we're going to talk about next. So actually, it's it's two different campaigns. So it's informational campaigns that we're going to talk about and training series that I want to talk about. So informational campaigns, what is that? Really, it could be two different things. An informational campaign could be something informing them on your business. It could be like, you know, the history of your business, how you came about, um, you know, services you offer, uh, that outside of, you know, it's kind of like an onboarding series, but it goes a little bit more in depth. It gives you a little bit more value. So you never want to just lead an automation with, hey, you can buy this. You always want to throw, and th this is just a tip for all automations. You never just want to throw, hey, there's this you can go buy. And hey, this you can go buy this too. And hey, you can, <laughs> like that just gets annoying and they're not trying to always buy something from you. Granted, your product may be the best in the world. You can't always get someone to buy from you. So you have to give them a reason. All right, it's called utility. Again, we've been talking about, or I've been talking about this a lot lately with Jay Bear, how he uses utility, um, Y O U utility, and he uses that to explain how your content should have, uh, it should have application. It should be able to, it should be actionable, meaning I should be able to take it and actually apply it to my life and it better my circumstances or whatever. Oh, and if you look at you know your Gmail account, there's a separate tab for promotional emails, and you know. How are you separating yourself from everybody else out there if you're just sending somebody uh, an email that's just trying to sell your product? You know, what's gonna, what would you do? What, what do you need to open an email? You got to think about that. Why am I just going to open, oh, yeah, you know, sale on this item? I'm not. Uh, it's, no, so. Right. No, Ted's totally right. Um, and I just saw this really quick, but Tanner... Tanner, we're live on YouTube every... Well, I'm live on YouTube. Ted's being a guest today. Um, I asked him to come on since we were talking about email marketing. Uh, he doesn't do the YouTube stuff as much yet. He's wanting to get into it, so we'll see what he does. But um, I just wanted to answer you real quick. Sunday, we do YouTube live events at 9 p.m. And then Thursdays, we do YouTube live events at 9 p.m. We also do Facebook live events at 12 p.m on uh, Tuesdays, sorry, on Tuesdays, we do it in my Facebook help group or my Facebook business page on Tuesdays at 12 p.m. Uh, so you can usually catch us there. We've not been able to get there these past two weeks because I've been working on stuff for clients. Um, but I always pretty much show up for the YouTube event. So I wanted to let you guys know that. Um, but uh, let me see here. So informational campaigns are all about that. I also wanted to talk about the other side of informational campaigns, which could be something about your product itself. So walking them through a actual example or an, a, a reason why they should consider the product itself. It's called a consideration campaign where you get them to think about why they would need this in their life or why it was even why it's worth them spending their money to get that product from you. Um, so those two types of or that type of campaign for informational is always really good to run. And then a training series. People love to be taught how to do things. So like for example with Serial Entrepreneur Academy, we do trainings on Facebook ads, on selling, on uh, landing clients, on just about anything you could think about with my marketing school that you guys have seen, all these live events that you guys see. You you can do this exact same process even if it's not a school. You can do training series with people. Um, people who sell software as a service use these a ton. I'm sure you guys have yeah. seen something like if you use Asana or Mailchimp, Meraki, yeah, Azure. Meraki, Azure, all of these softwares Azure. as a Azure, yes, yeah, <laughs> all these softwares as a service. They they basically make money on the fact that they know that they can send you this content and you're going to engage with it and that'll make you want more of their stuff because they're building that relationship with you and making you like and trust them. Okay, so those are two more really important ones. All right, and then we also have the re-engagement series, which you know, uh, as you somebody goes through an automation, you know, they might not be opening all the emails that you're sending them to them. <laughs> Most of them won't. <laughs> let's let's just be clear. Email marketing, when when you run 
email marketing campaigns, most people are not going to engage. You just, it's impossible to get 100%, 90%, even right. 60%. That's, you're doing amazing if you're getting 60% open rates on a regular basis. A good, a healthy open rate for automations is around 30%, you know, 40% if you're targeting people properly and if you're making sure that your content is engaging with the people who actually want to engage regularly. So that's why these are important, but go ahead. Right, but then you obviously, well, not necessarily obviously, but you know, potentially they just might not be the right style of emails for that person. You, you might have to go a little bit more aggressive or you know, kind of <laughs> left ball out there. But um, I mean, sometimes, and it's also extremely important to you need a decent open rate because if you're just blasting out spam, you know, mail servers are going to automatically flag your email and dump it into people's spam folders. You're going to have a le less open rate. So it's important to send to people, to filter out the people who aren't really opening your emails over time and add them to these re-engagement series. Figure out a ways to really just pull them back in. What's going to grab their interest? And eventually, yeah, not everybody's going to come back into that. but you know, there are some lost causes, but if you can get a couple people off of that, you know, hey, that's a couple more, you know, leads. Right, right. So re-engagement and then go over the next one, yeah. The engaged and disengaged series. So basically engaged and disengaged, sorry, we kind of just uh, switched off uh, before we actually started this live video, but basically engaged versus disengaged is basically just an automation that isn't even an email series at all. It's literally yeah, a okay. task series um so i'll let ted talk he knows what i'm talking about go ahead all right so it's really based on like their actions uh, a user's actions a contact's actions so we have an automation that's built based on a user performing an action which could be clicking a link opening an email just basically being engaged in what you're sending out so you know it, and even active campaign has these pre-built ones that you can add to um, your list of automations that'll take contacts and it'll be like, okay, after 30 days of this person not opening it, it might automatically throw them on a, you know, a disengaged tag to where they're not, you know, engaged anymore. Basically so. what it helps you do guys is segment your list. So, oh, my light went out. Basically what it does is it helps you segment your list. So if you know who your engaged audience is and you're able to send them more content that they keep opening, that's gonna help your open rate even more because mail delivery systems are not going to send it to a bunch of people who aren't gonna open it, which is not gonna flag your content, which means good stuff for you. So an engaged series says, okay, we're gonna keep sending the content primarily to the people who are engaging with our stuff currently. And then the disengage series says, okay, this person is not engaged with your brand. It adds tags to those contacts. And then you're able to say, okay, well, this disengaged audience, we can maybe try sending them a promotion, you know, a super cool promotion, like, you know, 45% off if you can afford to do that with your profit margins. But you guys get what I'm saying. It's a way to make sure, you know, okay, these people are engaged. These people are not engaged. How can I get these people who are not engaged to re-engage and what kind of content can I keep sending to these engaged people to keep them engaged, you know, even longer, all right? Next is going to be an add to cart reminder automation. So if you guys are doing e-commerce and even if you're not doing e-commerce or heavy online sales, but you sell like, for example, uh, the catering company that I work with, they do an online ordering process. So they're able to add an add to cart item to their purchase or they can add that uh, catering event to cart online. So what he's able to do is basically send out an email series to that person maybe 30 minutes to an hour after they add that item to cart and it says, hey, you might have forgot to finish your order because these people are at work. So, you know, stuff comes up at work that takes precedent over ordering a catering event for the next day. So they send that email series out and you're automatically retargeting those people and reminding them to say, hey, you need to go finish that purchase off and make sure you do that. I mean, think, how many times have you been on Amazon and you found an item you like, you put in your cart and you talk yourself out of it and then, you know, Amazon will send an, uh, uh, an add to cart reminder and you might pull the trigger on it based off of that email. Well, it, I believe, and don't quote me on this, but I, leave add, I believe that add to cart reminder series actually help increase your revenue by about 10%. 
So those people who fall off out of every 10 of them, it'll help you land one more customer on average. So that's a really good, that's a really big deal. If you're sending out five of those a day and you're able to close on one customer a day, you know, that's an extra sale a day that you're getting. That could be 50 bucks. It could be a hundred bucks. It depends on what your product is worth, but you know, that's extra money in the bank. So they're super important to do. All right. The next automation is the upsell automation. So this can really apply to two different types of customers. It can apply to a new customer. So, you know, you can offer, you know, a product at full price and then a second product at half price that they purchased today, or you could actually, you know, apply it to an old customer. So, um, you know, that's why you keep them engaged over time because then when you send out these offers, hey, thanks for, you know, purchasing product A, you know, think since you did that, you know, we're gonna give you product B for 25% off today. Right. And upsell automations, again, guys, the next part uh, to that is past customers. If you have people who are sitting there in a list and you come out with a new product, send that product to those people. They're already yeah. purchased from your business. They're likely to buy your stuff again. Sorry, we got a question. Let me look at this. Hey, guys, I've been sending at least four to five emails a day for only a week now, and I haven't gotten any, any emails back. Do you think it's my email style? or I just haven't sent enough emails. Um, Eric, if you're talking about emails to get potential clients, that's not what we're talking about in this specific video. Uh, this is actually email automations that you should be running for your clients. You could even be running this for your marketing agency. If you're running ads and collecting leads online, you could be sending your clients through email marketing automations about digital marketing, teaching them you know, quick tips on how to get stuff done for their business that they can implement themselves. And then when they can't get it done, they call you to do the marketing for them, right? But um, yeah, and we're not actually talking about that, but just to answer your question, four to five emails a day is not enough emails a day. That's only 25 to 35 emails a week, depending on how many days you're working a week, which means you're talking to 25 to 35 businesses a week. I recommend talking to more than that. That's all right, not a problem. I hope that answers your question. Well, and you know, to sound corny, you know, you guys have all seen the poster that says you only make, can make the shots. What is it? You can only miss the shots. You, I'm gonna mess it up. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, it, it's that inspirational poster that says, you know, the more shots you take, the more chance you have of making a shot. You right. Know, you gotta, like Jordan said, you have to be shooting out more emails. You, you, you only, net, you can't you only miss the catch. shots you don't take. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> that was funny. I'm sorry. <laughs> that was really good. Uh, okay, guys. Um, and then the last one we're going to talk about, Jacquez, what's up, man? Yeah. Um, the last one we're going to talk about is cross, prom cross, cross promotions. <laughs> we're going to talk about cross promotion campaigns, all right? And what I mean by this is promoting your social media channels. So, your end goal is to obviously get engagement across all channels, whether that's Facebook, Instagram, you know, Twitter, your website, your blog, whatever it is, you're trying to get people to all those places. So running a cross promotion campaign, even if it's like, hey, if you join, if you guys have actually, it's like irritating the shit out of me getting this email. If you guys follow Alex Becker at all, um, I'm on his email list, but he emails me at least once or twice a day now telling me that he's going to pay me I think like four hundred and fifty dollars to like his Instagram page or to leave a comment on his Instagram page and then you read the email and he's like I'm gonna give you this course for free and it's worth four hundred fifty dollars I'm like dude <laughs> I would have done it for 450 bucks cash because your dumbass would have been paying me, but <laughs> it wasn't for that. Like, mm -hmm. that's the thing. You, you have to understand you don't want to run those kinds of campaigns. You don't want to clickbait people into doing something, but you can run a specific kind of campaign um, cross promoting. Like, say, you know, if they come in, they next time they come in, they get 10% off when they show you that email and that you've liked the page, you know, something like that. Something where you're actually going to get them. You have to give them a reason, though. They're not just going to go like the page unless you're you know you're not you're not going to get them to like the page you, you just won't because why would i go like your page for no reason if i haven't already give them a reason to like the page but you can follow up with these people and get them to start engaging on other brands or not other brands but other channels so that way you have multiple ways to talk to them all right it's all about getting diverse and spreading out making sure that everybody is able to see you everywhere right so i'm trying to do more on my facebook game on my snapchat game which speaking of let me do that real quick. I'm just gonna do it for fun. <laughs> we're gonna get on Snapchat and tell people we're on YouTube Live and they need to come check out the video. 
Oh, oh damn it. <sighs> My VA is logged in. So what's something cool y'all did this week? Y'all land any sales this week? Y'all land any meetings this week? What y'all been up to? While my phone logs in because it's being slow. All right, so we're on YouTube Live. Me and Ted today. Hey. Yeah, we're talking about email marketing campaigns. So if you guys didn't get on the live because we're actually live right now, like we're actually live right this very second. It's a live social. So, yeah, you guys are on live. <laughs> all right, everybody's on live. We're all on live. Get on live. YouTube. Bye. That's why I don't do Snapchat much because I'm kind of I'm kind of weird and random, and I want it to look like Gary V's ch Snapchat because I think he does it really well. I hate Ty Lopez's Snapchat. I think Gary V does a really good job with his Snapchat, but we're working on that. We got to scale in other areas first that are more important. So, mm. all right, cool, Eric, that helped you. Perfect. I'm glad it helped. All right, guys, so we're gonna get out of here. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, just really quickly, I want to talk about some quick training for you guys. If you guys need free training, just go down in the description below and there should be all kinds of free training material, um, funnels that you can jump inside of that are for training based. Um, we have our Spotify playlist now. If you guys like to jam out and you need some hustler music, go check me out on Spotify. The link is also in the description below. We have some of our podcasts down there and last but definitely not least the map mentorship program guys. Um, Actually, no, we're not going to do it today. Stay tuned for next live video on Sunday. I'm going to give away a free map mentorship course. Woo! So y'all get there on Sunday. I'm going to give away a free map mentorship course. But that is the mentorship course where we do four live trainings every single month. We talk about basically everything digital marketing, growing your business, sales, everything like that. Uh, so, and you guys suggest the content. You tell me what to talk about. We put it together and basically put together a lesson that you guys get to save for forever. You get all of these videos forever um, because we send you a copy of it that you can download. Win for you, win for me. Everybody's happy. So, thank you guys for joining. I really appreciate you being here. And again, make sure to tune in every Thursday and Sunday at 9 p.m. So that way you can get updated with all the coolest shit we're doing at Serial Entrepreneur Academy. Woohoo! All right, guys. Me and Ted will talk to you later. There's this letter. Oh, wait, I gotta find it. Bye.